Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Thursday, 3 p.m. here in Chicago, May 28th, 2020. Hope you guys are doing well. We got a lot to talk about today. A lot has happened um, in the running world. But first, it is Thursday. We've made it through most of the week. So uh, it's time for happy hour. If you'd like to join me with your beverage of choice, doesn't have to be alcoholic, mine is. I'm going with a Goose Island SPF. Uh, which is described as an ale with natural passion fruit flavor. Very low IBU rating uh, number, which means it's not that bitter at all. It's something I have had before. I've been enjoying it all week, and I think this is the last one in the house, and I get the chance to crack it open today. Cheers, everybody. Hope you are having a good week. And as Dunbar is here, cheers, cheers, everyone, and happy, happy hour Thursday. Awesome. Um... Mark Chancoco is here. Steve, uh, raising a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon for your 50K. Thank you. Um, and he says, great run, great channel. Thank you very much, Steve. Cheers to that. I got it in my uh, Blake's seed-based koozie here. Um, every time I drink with this, the, the baby says, uh, wants to have it. And she always goes, Daddy, but I love parrots. Parrots are my favorite animal, you know. They're not actually her favorite animal, but like every, anytime she like sees something she wants, she knows how to lay it on thick. <laughs> All right, we got a super chat coming in here from Stevie76, chairman of our chairperson of the uh, Happy Hour subcommittee, saying, let me buy you a beer, Mr. 50K, living the dream. Well, thank you very much, sir. Cheers. Cheers to you. Hoping everyone is doing okay. Yeah, Lewis Cameron is saying Boston is canceled. That's one of the big pieces of news for today which I thought was really surprising. You know, every, you know like everything about things that are going on are just so, like, conflicted. You get, like, such mixed messages every time. You know, today, everything is, like, seems to be opening up. Uh, Illinois is going into the next phase of its reopening starting on Friday, tomorrow, for a lot of the state. Chicago is a little bit further behind because we have a much uh, higher intensity of cases. But I think June something, we're only like a week or two behind in terms of getting to that next phase. So on the one hand, it seems like things are getting better. On the other hand, you hear like, all right, well, Boston is canceled. So it's like for every piece of like what seems like really good news, you get like a dose of like reality, you know. So, yeah, Steve Ehrenberg says Chicago phase three is June 3rd, which is like another five days, like a, not even a week from that. So, um, yeah, so uh, it's... Uh, Good to hear that that's happening, um, but uh, at the same time, it's a bummer to hear about uh, Boston Marathon happening. Greg says, uh, I know how much you love virtual races, running the Boston Marathon virtual. I probably won't. Um, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Boston, of like virtual racing things. Um, but I guess that does bring us to like the second topic for today in terms of uh, things that I want to talk about. Today was the, like the announcement of the Believe in the Run virtual distance project, or I forget the exact name of it. It's with Polar and ASICS and Believe in the Run. And it's like a month long, um, like summer distance running. Um, I don't wanna call it a virtual race because I don't think it's a race. I think it's just a matter of getting miles in. Um, but Thomas reached out to me and asked if I wanted to participate. I said yes, and then he gave me details. And I was like, oh, good, I like it, okay. Um, so uh, yeah. So that's what uh, I'll be, that got announced today. I didn't really know much about it. Uh, I found out from like Ben Johnson's Instagram that uh, it was going to be like a month long running project. And I think I'm going to go for the 300 mile tier. So hopefully it's, I mean, it'd be better if it's a 31 day month, but it's supposed to coincide with like the start of Global Running Day, June 3rd, I think. And then go for 30 days, I think. Or maybe, hopefully it's at least 30 days if it's doing 300 miles. I could do that. That I could do. Um, yeah, so that's the, like the two big pieces of news for today. Uh, Paul Kane says, uh, hey, I heard your list of H2 running shoes. You excited about the Alpha Fly and the, uh, and the Alpha, oh, of the H2 running shoes um, you're excited about and the Alpha Flies didn't feature? Any reason you're not curious about this one? Paul, uh, I, I don't know. I just don't like that shoe. Uh, I think it's cool for other people to check it out, but I'm just kind of, um, it's not for me, I think. I think I'll pass on this one. So, um, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, it just looks, it's very, go it looks goofy. It sounds goofy, like listening to people running in it. And um, 
Some people are getting some fantastic times out of it, uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to try that one. Uh, Drake Holtry says, hey, Kofuzi, sipping on a Belgian triple out of Blanco, Texas, here in Dallas. Um, cool. Hoping the Dallas Marathon happens in December. Oh, that'll be interesting if that happens, because that could be a fun one to go to. I feel like the weather would be nice for that. December. I mean, December seems like, I mean, because that's not going to draw an international crowd, or maybe it will. I don't know. But hope you're enjoying your Belgian triple. Awesome. Um, Lewis Cameron says, yeah, we hit phase one on Monday, but then this news today, heartbreaking. Yeah, Lewis, and, and I think you and I have been talking about stuff that's been going on in Boston. You've been giving me some of the inside scoop. And I thought based on what we were kind of talking about that there was an outside chance it might actually happen, especially with the pace where things in the U.S. seem to be changing. So it was kind of a surprise to me to hear that the Boston Marathon is going completely virtual. But like we've been, we, like we've been saying uh, in our discussions here, everybody, um, that like there's just so much other logistics that have to go into it, so many other things that need to be like um, decided on and arranged ahead of time, like police, uh, EMT, volunteers, sponsors, city uh, road closures, things like that. Um, that like I guess like if you have to make a decision, you got to make it really early. And if it's like based on the information you have now. You know, you got to make that decision. I mean, I think the best case scenario is that we get to September and everyone's like, we totally could have had it today. You know, I mean, that'd be the best case scenario, wouldn't it? I think. Um, Drake said uh, he registered this week with fingers crossed. Well, that's interesting that they're taking registrations. Hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, Eddie Chan says, do you and the other 2020 BQers qualify for Boston 2021 20, automatically? I'm not sure how that works yet. I haven't looked at it. Um, I thought it mentioned something about it in the email that I perused very, very quickly. I just wanted to peruse it fast enough so that way I can like put the news out um, and get something up on Twitter um, that it was going virtual for sure. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to work. It remains to be seen. Um, Mr. Germson is here, says, yo, Mike, what's going on? Um, Cody Davis says, really enjoyed the 50K, 50K video today. Sorry about the Boston announcement. Does your invite defer to 2021? Um, I, what, did, what did it say? Does anyone else have information on that? Because um, I looked it over so fast. and I, I remember it mentioned something about it. I remember it saying that, like, I think you're invited to defer to 2021. And then, but if you want, you can still participate in the virtual as well. So I think that's you get two things. I'm not sure. Um, Ricardo Katagiri says, cheers, Co. Congrats on that 50K. Amazing. Had some beer and had and red wine. Awesome. Very cool. Um, Freddie Polito says, how are you? I'm Fred from Columbia. What's going on, Fred? Hope you guys are doing okay in Columbia. I haven't heard very much specific in terms of what's going on with the situation in Columbia. Hopefully, you guys are doing okay. Um, all right. Uh, AD said, did I miss on the on the beer review? No, I started drinking and I was just enjoying it so much that I haven't gotten a chance to talk about it. So this is a 17 IBU beer. Like if you think about most like IPAs, they're in like the 80s, I think, right? So 17 is makes it for an extremely um, sweet beer. Uh, I think sweet's probably the fair way to put it. Uh, it has a little bit of sourness to it, a little bit of tartness. So like if I didn't know that this was uh, with natural passion fruit, fruit flavor, I would probably call this like a grapefruit beer is the flavor that I would give it. And for me, I usually like kind of like fruity wheats and this is like right up my alley. So I like this. It's a little bit on the sweeter side. I wouldn't mind a little bit more bitterness to it for my personal taste. But in terms of a six pack that my wife and I can split, this is definitely one that works for, for the both of us. So yeah, I highly recommend. Definitely a summer sippable beer. The first time I had this, I think was at uh an event at the goose island brewery like the barreling facility and it was a um it was either at one of the nike pop-up races or maybe the heartbreak uh 20 miler it was either there or at the goose island bottling facility or the barreling facility at a puerto rican policeman's picnic one of the two or three but one of the two. But um, yeah, it's a tasty beer. I've had it. It's been out since last summer, I think, is when they introduced it. A very tasty beer. Um, 
the six pack has gone by gone uh yeah my my wife's been enjoying this i think more than i have uh over the past couple of days and then um and it says we need dog news so the dog's doing okay he had his surgery on his eye he had his left eye removed or his right eye removed yesterday yesterday um you know, the, the vet has been saying that he's been blind in it for a long time and he's had like glaucoma in it and, and it's just probably just been bothering him. And um, over the last couple of weeks, it's been getting worse, No matter, even though I give him like, you know, uh, five different medications, some of them up to three or four times a day, um, like eye drops. And so I was like, that can't be fun for him. So, and it's not helping. I was at least thinking that if I could keep it at like a, a level of stasis, that'd be fine. But it was getting worse, so I thought it was time. Um, and he's been real groggy since yesterday. He did go to the bathroom this morning, so I take that as a good sign. He's not that interested in his food. He's not interested in the the food the pills that I put inside uh, sun butter. He might just not like sun butter. I'll try almond butter later today. Um, so he hasn't been taking a lot of uh, his pills, but he's been enjoying some of his other treats. So I say on the plus minus, he's in pretty good shape. He let me put a cold compress on his eye for a little bit today. I didn't put it directly on the eye, I put it like on the side, on the top, just in case there's any swelling. And he let me do that for a couple of minutes today. But mostly he's been napping. There are brief moments where he's like interested in what we're doing. And I know it's not still like the pain meds. So he's just like, hey, what's going on here guys? So that's kind of like his normal, like, you know, before his eye started getting to be problematic, he was always kind of like wondering what we were doing. Uh, we always joke that he was hurting us, like H-E-R-D hurting us, you know, all the time. And I think maybe, you know, he's in the mood for it again. So that's good. Um, let's see. Steve Arnberg says, Goose is a Chicago treasure. I, I agree. And I, uh, I've i said this before, but I totally agree that, like, Goose Island should be, like, if for people that are in, like, B-schools and stuff, uh, should be a case study on how one larger company can purchase a smaller one, even with very different corporate cultures, and integrate them well and fund it so that way that smaller company can still thrive with all like the economies of scale of the bigger company. I just think it's a, what, what they've been doing has been fantastic. I mean, I don't, I don't see the balance sheets or anything like that or the bottom line numbers, but in terms of from a consumer's perspective, there's been much, much more product. It's still great, better than before, I would say, personally. Um, but the availability is through the roof, so I think it's great. I'm a big fan. Um, oh, Lewis Cameron says charity runners are still out of the loop as far as the Boston Marathon goes. No news going to them yet. Like I want, yeah, I wonder what your obligation requirements are like for that. And if you still got to raise all that money, or uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know how that works. Um, Jen from Moss says, happy Thursday. Just finished watching Trivia Tuesday and playing catch-up this week. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. That's fun. Um, Chris Ferris says, just wanted to say the uh, 50K video posted today was epic. Thank you. So amazing seeing your journey, both as a runner and a YouTuber. Thanks for everything you do. Well, thank you very much. You know, and um, yeah, today today's video, you know, I, I wasn't sure like exactly what I was going to do with the video once I started editing it. But I was like, you know, once I start, I probably should have some sort of clip. I don't, I didn't want to make like a clip show, but like, you know, uh, I figured I should have something in there. And then once I started doing that, like the story kind of started telling itself. Um, so I just kind of went with it, let the story tell it the way it wanted to be told. I hope. Um, yeah. And then kind of like the message I was trying to go for was that like, you know, for a long time I was just grinding. Um, and a lot of it was like execution errors and stuff like that. It's not like I had this caliber of video. The, not that my videos are like the highest caliber, but it's not like I had excellent videos the entire time. I certainly, there was a learning phase. It took a long time, but, um, I just kept grinding at it and it was something I liked doing. And, uh, I certainly proved that I wasn't doing it for the money or the views. Um, but you know, it ended up working out. And so, you know, I think that, uh, hard work doesn't always pay off, but it's really nice when it does sometimes, you know? Um, so yeah, thanks. I, I, I enjoyed that. Um, running guy says watching Ed Bud's video yesterday and he was talking about collabs. He said, your channel is in a different universe to his. Would you consider a collab with him? It is, it's another great channel. Yeah. We've already done one before we did the, um, ultra boost 20, uh, after a hundred miles review. And we're going to do another after a hundred miles review. We got some ideas, some things we could have really improved from the last one. What I want to avoid is doing like a zoom, like, him and me side by side talking about a shoe. I don't think that's as fun as far as like a package YouTube video. Like maybe then like that afternoon's live stream, the day that the video drops, maybe that becomes a live stream. But like 
um, to kind of do like to copy Jamie a little bit and do the post review review. But, um, you know, we're going to work on something. So we'll be doing some more work together soon. Um, yeah, EV says uh, from BAA Twitter, all participants who are originally registered for April 20 for or for the original 2020 Boston Marathon will be offered a full refund and be able to use their qualifying time for 2021. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. That's cool. So, yeah, looks like everyone who was in before is still in. That's good news um, for 2021. Thank you, Evie. Uh, Alfredo Pilego says, hey, Kofuzi, are you testing the new Ride 13? I, re I saw they will release it next month. I haven't seen that yet, and I've been waiting to hear about the Ride, if, they were, if it was going to get the Power Run treatment. I'll have to look into that. If it's getting Power Run or some version of Power Run, I'll definitely try it. Even if it doesn't, I'm a big fan of the, of the Ride series, so I probably will. Um, but that's the first I've heard of it, so thanks. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, Ricardo Categori says, just received the SL20s, Boston 8, Triumph 17, and Wildford 6. I think this COVID made me buy lots of things. <laughs> that's a pretty good stable there of, in terms of if you want to talk about speaking of Wild Horse, but you got a little bit of everything. That's a good lineup. That's a good rotation. Uh, Frank Patrick Fung says, the new Peg 37 and the Zoomfly 3 is the same price here. For long run, which you, would you recommend? I do like the Zoomfly 3. I don't think it's the best Zoomfly um, in like looking at them both in very far retrospect. I would probably go with the Peg 37. Um, because for me personally, like I had some issues running with the, the zoom fly three and it seemed to be a very small minority of people that had the same, like foot, it just bothered me in my, in like the, in the pads of my feet. Um, but it, I don't know what it is, but that shoe definitely like would make that issue become an issue. So that's why it's not my favorite shoe. So I'd probably go with the peg 37. Uh, J. Mark Remy is just says he's I'm here just outside of Boston, third most COVID cases in the country who would actually want to come here right now. Yeah. I mean, I know you guys got hit hard early um, from like a convention of some sort, I believe. And then um, I just thought that because of that and because it's still hitting you guys so hard that I, I you know, I had a hard time envisioning Boston inviting the world to come over um, as much I'm, as I'm sure you guys want to extend that hospitality. But yeah, it, it's just on the one hand, it seems like oh, it's still September. There's still so much that can happen. But on the other hand, it's still just ugh, I don't know. Makes me nervous. Um, Lacroix says, if you like fruity, I recommend Brewdog Clockwork Tangerine. A session IPA. That sounds tasty. Clockwork, I get it. Clock, like a clockwork orange, but a clockwork tangerine. That's clever. That's why I, I, one of the things I like about beer is very, very clever names. Um, yeah, Steve Ehrenberg says, good point. AB gave goose distribution without hurting brand. Yeah, and you just see that so many times when things get, like, acquired that it just, it gets messed up. But, you know, they did a good job of, like, letting it be it what it is, you know. Um, Tony Yu says, once the pandemic is over, I assume you won't be doing these every day. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Um, I suppose in other news to bring up, I meant to have three pieces of news for today. One was the Boston announcement. Two was the... Um, believe in the run asics and polar like the summer running uh project distance running project and the third was going to be that uh, most of you won't care but just to give you an update on what's going on with me is that the uh, chief justice of the local court system here is going to extend closures till july so i won't be going to back to work anytime soon um right now the courts are still kind of open if you have emergency matters things that are like you know extremely urgent um but that generally means mostly just criminal stuff, uh, not the civil stuff that I work in. I've never worked a criminal case before. I mean, I've helped people who are going to do criminal cases, but I've never like worked on a criminal case. So, um, I mean, I don't work on any of the cases. I never worked on a client who I work with the attorneys. So, um, but yeah, so I won't be doing any work anytime soon. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nathan, it says, sorry I'm late. That's okay. Um, I was laughing at Drake Holtry talking to Tony. says, don't speak it into existence. We love the daily live stream. I mean, I'm really loving it too. So, like, I don't, I'm not sure, like, when we could do it at a time that would still make sense for everybody. Um, and then, like, once, like, real life starts again, like, I won't have, like, this kind of time. Um, although, like, I had already been trying to work out a way to, like, be at work less, 
you know, give my people more time or more opportunities to really flourish in their roles. Um, it got to the point where I feel like my constantly being there was disabling them from uh, getting to make some hard decisions, getting to make some hard mistakes and getting to learn from them, you know? So I was like, how do I help them to really grow? Um, and I felt like in a lot of ways, the best way to do that was for me to get out of the way. And so this is a transition that we had already been working on. Um, but, you know, we'll see how we can do that. I don't know. I don't even know what that looks like. Um, yeah, Steve Arnberg says, would be a good chat topic someday to hear about everyone's shoe rotation. I was just thinking that too. We got to figure that out. And I think, you know what, Steve? Here's what we'll do. I'll make a one, one more announcement for tomorrow while I got you guys all here. So the product that I was telling you guys or teasing you guys about a little bit, not teasing you guys, but that, that I was teasing, um, is a live stream product that is, it will be right in the YouTube live stream. Um, I'm, I'm going to try, I want to try it out tomorrow. So, um, and uh, what it is, it's like a live stream, but without the camera. So you're like, well, what's the point of that? That makes that seems to be an inferior product for you guys. It's a lot easier for me, and I think it's designed to make it a lot easier for a lot of other creators as well where, that are like trying to figure all this stuff out is too much for them. And I think um, that is a lot for a lot of people, even if they're on YouTube. Um, but the benefit is uh, we'll still have chat, and I'll see the chat, and I'll be able to interact with you guys like we're chatting. Uh, but there's a special... Um, phone number that it gives me and you guys will be able to call in and so it'll be like a like a straight up old school radio show but with chat so we'll try that tomorrow and see if we like it um and i think tomorrow's topic will be tell me your shoe rotation so we could talk about that so yeah let me know what you guys think we'll try it tomorrow i'll kind of well i mean i've i'm playing around with it i'm testing it but we'll see like you know if it actually does any if it does what it's supposed to do and um but i think it'll be fun to actually like be able to hear you guys too um kind of like one on instagram you know i can invite people into the video i'm hoping at some point that um and that this is definitely feedback i'm going to give to the people that gave me this beta it is be like do you guys got to make it as easy as instagram to bring someone in so we can chat and make it a video radio show that doesn't make sense, but you know, you guys know what I mean. So that's kind of like, that'll be tomorrow and we'll talk about our shoe rotations. I, I think that would be super cool to think about um, and to hear from you guys about. Uh, Mark Chang Coco says, that'd be cool, post review, review, collab. I think that'll be um, fun to do. I think that like, that's another thing that's like nice right now about doing the, um, as I was thinking about, like I had like a whole news report today. Um, I mean, not every day does like a world major marathon cancel and then a new summer distance running project get announced. Um, um, so it's, there's not new running news every day. Um, but I was like, Oh, that's, what's nice about it is that it's like a place where we can come and talk about like current events and happenings. So I was like, that's pretty cool. And I was just kind of spitballing, brainstorming with you guys here and thinking like, well, if we're doing collabs, I should, we should have more, we should have that collab person on the YouTube live stream. That is another like it's like another order of magnitude of complexity for me because then i can't just use an ipad for that i don't think anyway i'm not sure how i'd be able to do that maybe ed knows i'll ask it um but like i don't want to have to like get a laptop and then run the camera into the laptop and all that other stuff so i'm trying to keep it um uh simple keep for vacation talking about the radio show says we know what your ugly mug looks like anyway <laughs> that's true that's true um yeah <laughs> key verifications is passion fruit is this a sunscreen discussion oh that's funny the first time i had it i had a lot of sunscreen on and i was like this beer tastes like sunscreen um and i was like maybe some got into it but i i hear what you're saying there there is like a there is a potential for sunscreeny type of flavor to it uh, victor silva says can increasing the amount of time you can hold your breath improve your running that's an interesting question i have no idea um i don't know because if you think about like, you know, swimmers and divers, uh, the only, ex not experience, but the only like reference point I have is like when I was reading David Goggins book about like his seal training where they had to just hold their breath for a really long, crazy amount of time underwater. Um, I don't know that that necessarily can, I mean, maybe because it's all, a ro you're, 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 what is that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
I really don't know. I could, I could be convinced either way on that one, I would tell you right now. Um, Marielle Van Ort says, here I am. It's a bit late for me, but with the workday uh, to go, it's okay. Yeah, good to see you. How, how are you? Um, CJ Crew says, work is getting in the way of Thursday happy hour. I should quit. I mean, that's literally a question that I have. Not with Thursday happy hour, but like with live stream. Like when I've been thinking about the live stream, I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be good to go back to work, but it's really going to get in the way of my YouTubing. Um, which is like a very strange sentence to say. But I, I mean, that's kind of where the, the two worlds are starting to collide, you know. Um, Kevin Scott says, your phone number radio show, how does it work for us international viewers? I will have an answer for you tomorrow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'll test it just to make sure like the functionality works. And then like, I'm going to unleash it on you guys. Um, and we'll figure it out together. I guess we'll be the guinea pigs. We'll be the, um, the beta, we'll be the beta testers for it. Drake Culture says phone to co. So cool. Awesome. So, I mean, hopefully, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Um, Daniel M says, if you could compete in a charity relay race with one other YouTuber, who would you pick as your teammate? Just one. Um, I'd probably pick Jamie because, um, I feel like we would get along pretty well and keep it light. Um, and if it was a relay race, charity relay race. Yeah. I mean, I'd probably pick Jamie. Um, Seth would be good, but I would feel like I was holding him back, you know, so there'd be a lot of guilt there. Um, I think Doozer would be another Ryan Van Doozer. Do you guys watch him? Um, he doesn't always post running. He's been doing a lot of bicycling lately. Um, but he's an incredible runner, and he's interviewed a lot of people while running. So he's, he's definitely got chops. But um, that, I think he'd be a good one, too, just because he's, I think he'd be so good at problem solving. Like, all the things that can go wrong on, a, on like a long like relay race, he'd take it in stride and would have an answer for everything. So that probably be my, like my second choice. I don't know if I'd be on his list, but he'd be on mine. Um, Lewis Cameron says, have you seen the new Sony volume camera? I've seen that one, a new one was announced. Um, and people, so far, like it's getting good critical reviews. Um, but I haven't actually like looked at it in a while. Mark Chancoco asks, should I order the Endorphin Pro or customize a second pair of the PEG 37? I would say if you already have a pair of the PEG 37, get a pair of the Endorphin Pro. Um, it's a pretty good shoe. I have to figure it out so, though a little bit more. I need to put some more miles into that one because um, it wasn't exactly it wasn't anything like what I was expecting. But I still think it's a pretty good shoe. So uh, more testing is required. But I mean, if you've already got one peg, go with something. Whatever the other thing you're thinking about is what I would say. Um, like just uh, slush says. Uh, just curious, do you speak any Korean? I speak a little bit. Uh, at this point, I understand more, way more. I've always understood way more than I speak, but now I pretty much can understand stuff. But basic, I have a very rudimentary vocabulary at this point, and I can't really speak anymore. Um, a couple of years ago, I noticed that no matter where I go, like uh, the cat, if I go to like a Korean restaurant, a uh, Korean grocery store, any like Korean place anymore, um, the cashiers no longer will speak to me in Korean. They'll just only speak to me in English. Um, I think they just assume that I don't speak Korean. I think, you know, you can tell. Um, so I think that's just very obvious that I'm not the one that's going to be speaking Korean or preferring Korean. So maybe they can just tell that I would prefer English, which I do. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, A1 Rex says, much love from Los Angeles. Hey, what's going on? Hopefully you guys are doing well over there. Um, what's a tip to increase your 160 steps per minute cadence? Um, I would say number one, I don't really think too much about cadence. Um, but if you want to make it faster, take shorter steps. So, um, take shorter steps, pick up your knees, really think about like snap up. So you're hitting the ground and snap, 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 snap. You know, that's how you like increase turnover. So if you want to work on that, you can, but I just think that my, Longer, less specific, but I think more accurate answer would be to run more. And then, um, but, you know, if you want certain things to think about, those are the things I would think about. Uh, Jeanette Sear says, my shoe rotation is immense since watching your reviews. <laughs> the call would be too long. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. But, I mean, hopefully with all the people that are buying all these extra shoes, hopefully you're not mad at me about it. And hopefully it means that you're running more than ever, having more fun running than ever. I know I'm running more than ever and having more fun running than I ever have. 
Um, and it's been great. I really enjoy it. Um, let's see. Uh, Ken Pfaff says, I, w I was reading that Seb Co or Sebastian Co uh, used to do uh, training holding his breath. That's interesting. He's on like the, is he on the, like the uh, Olympic? He's like a chairman of the Olympic committee or is he on like the British? He's involved uh, administratively in running somehow, isn't he? Um, yeah. Uh, Drake Holtry said, would you be annoyed if your employees were watching your live stream while on the clock? No, not if they're watching. Well, I mean, not just my live stream. You know, I, they can have stuff on in the background when they work. I don't care how you get your work done as long as the work gets done. We have really fast deadlines in, in our line of work. So it's like, um, and a lot of times it has to be done. Just It has to be done when it has to be done. So like, I might ask you to put in a long shift and if you need something in the background to do it, yeah, that's cool. As long as the work's getting done. Um, Chris, he says, uh, Sebco is a president of IAF. That's right. I thought so. Uh, thanks for the, the help there. Uh, Phil Raleigh says, keep it light with Jamie. Don't you mean keep it tight? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, um, every time I see him, I always intentionally get his send off incorrect and it drives him crazy. Um, it's really funny to intentionally say it wrong around him. <laughs> um, Kurt C says, I'm excited to add a shoe to his rotation suit. It's on the way. The end of Oh, cool. I've been hearing good things about it. Uh, I think Motivation Running Theory did uh, uh, I think he just reviewed it, too. I haven't seen it yet, though. Um, Joey Lucky says, swimming has kind of helped his breathing because you learn to find a rhythm or you inhale water. Yeah, I bet you that is really helpful. Hmm. Bruno Casatari Bruno says, how did the Carbon X feel through the 50K? I'm surprised you didn't pick the Triumph 17. Congrats again for both 50K and for being such an inspiration. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I didn't really uh, think about the Triumph 17. I forgot that I still have it. Um, I've been saving it for when the ride comes out. We were talking about the ride earlier, a Saucony. Because um, then I'm going to do like a Saucony, like a brand review from like the Triumph, uh, the Freedom, the ride, and then the Kinvara. Um so I forgot that I have it. That's the main reason I didn't use the Triumph 17. That would have been a good pick. Uh, I was mainly looking between the Carbon X and the Nova Blast. Just because the Nova Blast is so squishy, I was like, that might be really welcome around mile 25. But then I was like, but if at around mile 25, it just feels like I'm sinking into it every time, I'm going to be really annoyed. So I wasn't sure. Um, I know people have taken it for very long distances and they think it's great. So I felt like my concerns were probably overblown. But then I thought, you know, the Carbon X, I didn't like it at the marathon distance because I didn't think it was like, had enough oomph to it, so to speak. I didn't think it was spicy enough. So I felt like, you know what, but for the 50K, that might be exactly right. So that's uh, how I picked it. And I thought it was great. It was like the right shoe for me to have. I felt like in the early miles, it helped me just stay smooth and kind of keep going. Um, it probably had me going out a little bit faster than my level of fitness, but I really had no way of gauging what like the right pace was for me. I kind of just guessed because, um, one, I never run this distance, and two, I, I did like no race-specific training for this, so I was kind of going out there winging it. And then around mile 14, I was like, we got to slow this down a lot. And then by mile like 19, I was like, mm, we might not – I mean, I knew I'd, I'd finish it one way or the other, but I was like, I don't know that I'm going to finish this in a very honorable way. <laughs> so I was like, I had to really slow it down. Um, I did that for a couple of miles, and then I was able to kind of bounce back towards the end and find a rhythm. And I think the the Hoka's, because I've always felt like running in the Carbon X is like running on an elliptical, but on regular ground. It's just so smooth. I just like the way it feels when you run in it. And though I felt like that really came in handy for me at the end. Um, Shannon says, on Instagram, I followed Runner X to do drills and watch correct running form to get cadence closer to 180. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people that talk about cadence. I know Track Club Bay. She does um, a lot of talk about um, cadence. It seems to be like the main thing that she talks about. It's her favorite. It seems to be like her favorite thing. Um, but she's another person that does, does a lot of stuff about drills on how to increase cadence. Um, yeah. Um, the Kid Is All Right has a great tip here. He said, there is music specifically catered for running cadence, 180 beats per minute. Just run with the beats. That's a great idea. That is a really great idea. 
Um, Jody Run says, Cadence question. The Run Experience channel had a three week challenge which you could try. That's true. They've been big on it as well. They do a lot of drills. They have so much, they have so much content. It's amazing. Mark Shankoko says, I'm definitely running more than ever. The shoes are a big motivator. I agree with that. Um, like before it was like, you know, you would get the iPod because you're like, I'm going to get this iPod and I'm going to run a lot more with it. And that lasted for a little while. But I feel like with the, the shoes, the shoes and being able to like gamify it, putting it on social media for me are the two things that really made it like click. Being able to like log miles of them and think about them in this kind of way of like how is the product performing over time um, and really kind of diving into it. But also being able to track like mileage, that's been really interesting for me. Uh, Piet Johnson asks, are you still heart rate training? And if so, how are you finding it? Um, I'm kind of like heart rate training still. Uh, for me, for the most part, I've gotten to the point where I've progressed in my, I'm using the Maffetone approach. Of, I know there's a couple of different ways to approach low heart rate training. I'm using Maffetone. And I'm to the point now where if I do run at like my Maffetone number, which for me is 145, if I run at that pace every day for the amount of miles that I run, um, I'd be a little bit, uh, I feel like it feels like a moderate effort and it's, it's almost too hard. And so a lot of days, my easier days will be closer to like 140 uh, or even a little bit lower than that. It might be like down to 138 on average. So I feel like that's been great. So I feel like finally my cardiac level of like uh, what it is experiencing as easy is the same as what mentally I feel is easy for running level. So like my cardiovascular system, I feel like, and my musculoskeletal system are finally in sync. And I feel like that's been great. And I think that what that has let me do in the last training block before Boston got canceled, looping back to Boston, is I felt like I was able to run a lot of high mileage and doing that regularly. And then also now being able to, as race specific time, as it like a race approached, I was able to then add in and leverage that like bulk of strength of like mileage and base to do high quality speed work as well. So I felt like it was doing really, working really well for me. Right now I'm just kind of running, having fun with it. Um, Ted and Ruth asked, what was your mile average on the 50K? I ran 8.58 on average. So I was hoping for like anywhere between eights and 8.30s. Um, but after the first mile, I knew that that was probably a little bit ambitious. Maybe 8.30s would be good for the day. Um, and then I quickly realized, no, let's just finish. <laughs> let's not worry about time. Um, <laughs> uh, key verification said, carbon X's make you Jim Walmsley. And that's facts. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Victor Silva asks, do training masks have any benefits? I read an article that said the masks were supposed to mimic high altitude training. The high altitude training is only beneficial and you live in it if you live in it for days. Yeah, uh, I've seen those kinds of ads and a company did reach out to me at one point to ask if I would run with the mask. And I was like, run with a mask, that seems silly. Who would ever want to do that? Um, but uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. Cause I feel like, yes, there's benefit to like being at altitude for running or mimicking that with the mask and training with it. But I would think that you probably would need to like live with that thing on for you to get altitude like benefits from the mask. Or maybe if you're only using it while you exercise, maybe you get some, it just takes longer to get it. I'm not sure. I just feel like the human body adapts to um, oxygen levels in the air so quickly that like, I think that if you constantly flip from like during exercise, I wear a mask and when I'm not exercising, I don't. I feel like your body would just like be confused and like negated out. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. Um, Jody Run says, I'm running by heart rate for a recovery of 118 beats per minute. And surprisingly, it is getting easier to run at a constant pace and not have to walk. That's awesome. That's cool. I mean, that's the whole point. That's like uh, what we're, you know, the, the result that you're looking for, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, that running guy says, if you want to look at the perfect effortless style and cadence, check out Ben Park. He does have a pretty running gait. It does always look like he's jogging, though, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, Jeanette Sierra says, Seb Coe comes from the same city I grew up in, Sheffield, UK. It's very hilly. Maybe another reason he was a good runner. You just can't avoid steep hills in Sheffield. I didn't know that. That's cool. That's cool to know. Um, Jordan Rundell says, Boston Marathon just canceled. Thoughts? Yeah, we, we talked about that early on in, in the, uh, the live stream today. 
it's i mean i think it's something we all saw coming i think we were all hoping that it wouldn't get canceled or that it would go but you know it's hard to see and it's just hard to see that like it um that they would invite the, the world to come over you know that's the hard thing i think just you have to think about all the people that would be in close proximity and where they would all come from um uh, frank lahulia says uh your heart rate didn't spike up much after glycogen depletion yesterday yeah that's because i started running a lot slower so I just was like really slowed down. And so I, I really wanted to make sure that I didn't like hit the wall and have to walk. So like once I kind of sensed, you know, it wasn't a great mental toughness day, but like once I sensed like, okay, things are getting to be a little bit tiring. Um, I, I just really reduced intensity a lot. So I think my heart rate ended up being relatively constant for most of the run. Um, CC asked, how's a dog doing now? Right now he's sleeping, I think. Where is he? Yeah, he's alternating between his dog crate, which is like over there, and then his bed, which is back there. He just kind of like alternates napping spots. Um, Go Kiwi says, will you do a 50K regularly? I mean, I don't know what regularly means, but um, I think probably maybe once a year. I like it. It was a good distance. I mean, I mean I've been toying with the idea of having longer marathon training runs. Like, um, I think that there's a lot of psychological benefit to running even like a low heart rate 22 miler or maybe even longer maybe 23 maybe 25 you know so like i'm toying with that idea maybe that makes no sense at all but i might try that in like an upcoming marathon training block um, or maybe that just means you know one of the things i've been talking about like when this is all over whatever that means is just that like um I'd like to, maybe it's because I watched all those Boston Marathon replays and I saw the one with um, Yuki Kauchi and how he runs like a marathon like every other week um, or like every three weeks. Is that like I just want to, maybe I'll just run uh, a lot of marathons. And so uh, maybe some of those days and like just use it as a way of just having long runs, but also to go around and meet everybody and run with different people in different places and experience different races and towns and just go experience more running uh, not once we can get outside and I think that you know throwing in a 50k every once in a while in there I think would be a lot of fun too to do that you know not running I mean still race maybe one or two a year like really make those my like goal races but for the rest of them just turn them into really long runs and just have fun maybe pace other people that'd be kind of fun too um Brett Reed says Cam Haynes runs a marathon a day yeah I'm not gonna be doing that uh, I'm not doing like that or like doing anything like that what Dean Carnassus would do, but um, yeah, I think running them like somewhat regularly, I think would help me a lot psychologically too, in terms of being able to, to like, to like, to feel like I own the race, to feel like I can do the race and I'm not as scared of the distance. Um, see, Michelle said, Marielle says, I try running with low heart rate, but I have to walk because my heart rate is very high. Uh, I can run two hours, 20 minutes with 175. Oh, wow, really? That's crazy. That's, that's incredible. I would, you know, like you're my, you might be one of those people where like the, re like the numbers that people say like, oh, here's the formulas might not work for you. You might have to go to get like a test if you wanted to do low rate heart rate running. So that way you can actually determine what your lower heart rate is for you. All right. Um, all right, I gotta get going soon, so I'll, I'll take some of these at the end. Tony, you says, do you do anything to help you sleep well through the night? Given you wake up er so early, you must have to fall asleep rather quickly. Tony, I don't do anything to help me sleep. I'm just being really tired is enough um, to help me sleep. And I think I've always been somewhat of a relatively deep sleeper or an easy sleeper. Like I've always been someone that like, when I travel, I put the timer function, like the sleep timer function on the TV. I like to fall asleep to noise. Um, so I don't really get, uh, startled in the middle of the night that easily. Um, so yeah, so I've been I've, sleeping for me is very easy. I don't probably cause I, I chronically don't do enough of it. My body's just <laughs> exhausted all the time. So, um, yeah, Shannon says 70 miles per week makes passing out pretty easy. It does. <laughs> it does. That's probably it. So, um, yeah, the other thing that I would, uh, I think that if I ever had a hard time sleeping, is I would probably invest in one of those heavier, like those weighted, W-E-I-G-H-T, weighted blankets, because I think those just are so nice. 
Like whenever a blanket's really heavy, I love it. All right. I think that's a good place to leave it for today. Hopefully you guys had fun uh, on today's conversation. Remember, tomorrow we're going to try the Radio Call-In Show. So there'll be instructions. I'll try to figure a way to put it in the description or whatever. Um, figure that out. And then I'd love to hear from you guys. Keep it, And I'll remind you tomorrow. But, like, I want to know about your shoe rotations. I'll start off with mine. And then we'll start taking callers from listeners. I'm going to need a, like, a producer, too, now to, like, tell me. All right, now we got Steve coming in from, you know, wherever. That'd be kind of funny too. If I could bring in a second, like a co-host, I'm making a list of things that I gotta, they gotta put in the next version. But uh, so hopefully that'll be fun. Otherwise, I'll be also on uh, Instagram tomorrow, 6 a.m. To, if you guys want to see me there, um, and 3 p.m. for the radio show tomorrow. All right. Hope you guys are staying safe out on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.